Hey, what's happening, everybody? In this video, I wanna show you how you can create a React Bootstrap carousel using GraphQL and Gatsby image to query a folder of images. I've got a folder right here, Mojave Desert. And what we're also gonna do is we're gonna pull in the data of the file name as both the caption and the alt information for accessibility. And we're gonna use the power of GraphQL to automatically size, if we look at this picture, it's not the same size, it's a little bit wider and a little bit shorter, we're gonna leverage the power of GraphQL to make every picture the exact same size in our carousel to make it look flawless. And once again, pull the caption down below via the file name over here. So if I change the file name on this side, it'll then change the file name and the caption down below along with the alt. And we're getting started right now. All right, once again, my name is Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes. And this channel is all about helping you design more and to troubleshoot less. If that's what you're looking for online, then hit that subscribe button, hit that little notification bell so you never miss a video. All right, so a few things to note before we get started. One, I am using the Gatsby Starter Default design, which is at gatsby-starter-default at gatsbyjs.com. Mine looks a little bit different because what I've done is I just stripped down the code to its bare essentials. So it looks like this, without that purple top and a little bit of inside that container design. That to me just helps me get started. If you wanna know how I built this, I will put a link down below in the description. I have also gone ahead previously and installed React Bootstrap, which you can find at react.bootstrap.github.io. Again, if you wanna know how to install React Bootstrap, I have a link down below in the description. So I'm starting with a fairly blank canvas with a couple things previously installed. So the first step I have to do is organize my files because I'm gonna query this folder of information. I'm using the Gatsby default starter, so what you will find is your typical config, nodes, your packages, your node modules, and inside the source folder, inside my images, and what I also did, I forgot one more thing, is I did create a CSS file and called it custom CSS. So I do start with a blank CSS file. It looks like that, and I have an images folder and everything else that comes with the trappings of the Gatsby starter default. So in here in my images folder, I have a desert folder. And what I wanna do is I've got three photographs and I wanna create a rotation or a carousel of the Mojave Desert, the Sahara Desert, and the South Sudan Desert. Now, full disclosure, I have no idea if these desert photos are the actual locations or not. I head over to unsplash.com and I found three desert photographs. So. Don't throw comments if you know that where these desert photos are. I just searched desert and I found these three photographs. Couple things to note though right here in these file names. Note that in this case, I do have uppercase letters. I'm a big proponent of keeping everything lowercase, but in this case, we're gonna leverage the power of these file names. So I have Mojave-Desert, Sahara-Desert, and South Sudan Desert here to query that information. We're gonna use these file names as alt information and captions within our carousel. So the naming of the files from the very beginning is important. Now that we have the files in place, let's fire up Gatsby and go into GraphQL because I wanna make sure I can query the information first before I come into my index page and write a query there. So let's bring over the terminal, or in this case, I'm using iTerm2 on the Mac, and I'm gonna say, in this case, Gatsby, develop, and fire up this website. And in theory, this of course will fall apart until it actually runs, there we go, perfect. Localhost 8000, localhost 8000. So in my localhost 8000, the graphical, let me close out in a different window here, because I'm not using this one. Maybe one more second, perfect. All right, so let's do this and move some files around since I'm in Safari. So we have graphical. So what I wanna do is I wanna first query this folder of images to then make sure I can pull it successfully into GraphQL. I always start with GraphQL because if it doesn't work here, it will definitely not work 
here. But if it does work in GraphQL, then I know that only my error messages are from me copying and pasting in the wrong way inside my JSX file. So within GraphQL, what I wanna to go to is all file. Now, the great part about using this starter template, just to kind of go back one step, is if I head back into my Gatsby config, what I like about this starter template is it's already built in to query the images. So already inside my Gatsby config, we have the Gatsby source file system already pointing to the images using the directory name, the source, and the images. So knowing that, I can jump right away into GraphQL by pulling the information out of the images folder. So if we head back to GraphQL one more time, what I do wanna do is not all Buzzsprout episodes. Thank you, that is not what I am looking for. Let me close that piece. That was from a different project when I was working in Buzzsprout. So all file. So if I click on all file on the left, and I just, mine actually pulls up pretty, that was actually pretty nice. So it jumped right into the ID where it went all file, edges, node, come go away, and ID. And now we have the IDs. Well, that's great, but let's actually pull the information of the actual picture. I'm gonna click on relative path, and now it shows me Gatsby icon, Gatsby astronaut. Notice the relative path now has desert, desert, and desert. So the path is important, but if we take it one level deeper, what I'm looking for is the relative directory. Because what I wanna do is I wanna query, notice now what happens. There's no relative directory for those base files, Gatsby icon and Gatsby astronaut, but there is a relative directory for desert, desert, and desert. I can pull the information right here by filtering the information when it comes to relative directory. So now that we see the relative directory, let's filter out the astronaut and the Gatsby icon by heading up to the top. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say filter. And in the filter area, I'm looking for the relative directory. So if I scroll down on my page, there we go, relative directory is going to equal desert. And now when I filter it, check it out. Now I'm down to three. Now there is one more piece I have to put in and that's the regex, where I have to do a little extra find because when we actually query it, it has to know what kind of file type to pull the information from in order to put the folder or the files in properly. So I'm looking for extension because I'm gonna filter even further the specific file names. Now in this case, all we have are JPEGs, so I have to worry about PNGs, but I will write them in in case I were to bring them in down the road. So under extension, what I'm gonna say is, in this case, equal to slash, where'd it go? And then in parentheses, JPG, end parentheses, vertical line, parentheses, PNG, and then vertical line, we'll add the JPEG in case one time I forget to bring in just the three letters and bring in the four letters. And after that, I'll put, I'll put a slash to say extension equals JPG, PNG, and JPEG. And now, I did something wrong. And I did find what I was doing wrong. I didn't need to have the equals, but I need to find the regular expression or the regex down below. The good part is I know I typed this in the right way. The bad news is it's not equals, so I'm gonna undo that and come down to regex and paste it in. And there we go, now magic can happen. Once again, I'm always gonna spend time in GraphQL first to make sure these pictures are working properly because once I can filter, sort, do everything here in GraphQL, I can copy this information and bring it right into my index file. So I have the regex through extensions set up properly, which is slash parentheses JPEG, vertical PNG, JPEG, GPEG, slash. That's great. But I also want to do is I want to sort these by alphabetical. I'm not so worried about Mojave coming up first or last, but I just think about if the folder I have here under images and desert 
isn't alphabetical, I want to still go in that same direction. So what I'm going to do is I then want to sort by a specific field and then also go in either ascending or descending direction. So all I have to do is I have to find the sort, which is right down here in GraphQL. So sort says, which do you want to sort by? And I'm going, I want relative path to search by. So the fields, this case I'll type in relative, well directory will work, but I have to find the relative path. The fun part is I have to go find it. So if I type in relative path, nope, still didn't find it. Oh, I found it, there it is. It's just the second from the top and I went go searching for it. This is mostly an alphabetical order, but it's not in perfect alphabetical order. So I'm looking for relative path because to me, that's gonna be an alphabetical order. Dessert is always gonna be the first word, but Mojave is then gonna be, or South Sudan will be the letters I'm looking for. So if I say relative path, and in order, I'm gonna say descending, now what's gonna happen is, actually I want ascending, I take that back. Now Mojave Desert, Sahara, and South Sudan are all arranged in alphabetical order ascending from relative path. If I wanna go Z to A, then I can say descending. And now South Sudan is first, Sahara is second, and Mojave is third. This will help me arrange the files inside my carousel moving forward. I can't manually move them around, I'd have to go one of two ways, either ascending or descending and the relative path. Cool, so far so good. So awesome, I can pull the information. What I next wanna do is I now wanna run the Gatsby image inside GraphQL to make sure I know that these files are pulling properly. So for Gatsby image to actually work, I have to go find the child image sharp inside of those nodes. So if we look for edges and node, what I'm gonna look for is child image sharp. Now you can choose one of two things. You can choose fixed or fluid. I pretty much 98 out of 100 times choose fluid because on the web, almost everything is responsive. But if you want a fixed picture, you can choose fixed. I'm gonna choose fluid down here. Now, what I usually do is, is that if I just click fluid and I choose one of these options down below, I just wanna make sure it's pulling information. So I might say base 64, perfect. I don't need to worry about all this information going on, but all I know is, is that the child image sharp is present and fluid. With Gatsby image, you actually can't write the last component in GraphQL, it just won't work. So I'm gonna replace this base 64 with a Gatsby image component. And if I find, I thought I had it open. Gatsby, wow, I can't type as I'm talking all of a sudden. So in Gatsby image, what I'm gonna eventually do, if I scroll down the Gatsby image page, I'm looking for the fixed fluid, in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace this information, this base 64, with one of these options below. And even it tells me that due to a limitation of GraphQL, you cannot currently use these fragments in the graphical IDE. So I don't need to worry about it, but I just like to pull a base, literally a base 64 in this case, or I might choose aspect ratio, or just something to make sure I have a placeholder for right now. Cool, I'm good with this. The good thing is, is that in GraphQL, I'm all set. Now let's head over into our index file and we'll eventually copy and paste all of this information into our index page to pull the data. What we'll do is we're gonna run our Gatsby image first and then we'll then implement the carousel second. So let's head over to our JSX file and we're gonna come back to this in a second. So inside, and what I also will do is make sure you have your terminal that you can see because this will start giving you error messages pretty soon if you mess up on a certain component. I only have so much real estate on my screen, so at times I could put it over here at least to see a success or error. But do note if you're not seeing everything, if there's a big red error that shows up, I'm gonna stop and take a look at it. So let's head over to Visual Studio Code 
And what I first have to do is come up to the import section and add GraphQL from Gatsby. So I'm gonna say import GraphQL, is it, nope, it's lowercase as I check my notes there. So GraphQL and link, and if I save it, it should error message it and say, hey, you're not using GraphQL. And I'm going, well, I will, hang tight, I'm getting there. So what I have to do is, is I have to create a query. So below in my Gatsby starter default, it says export default image. I'm gonna scroll up and I'm gonna say export constant, C-O-N-S-T, page query equals and say GraphQL. I'll add the back tick marks and they're right there and I'll drop them down. So what I wanna do next is I wanna add a query to this page query. So I'll tab in and I'm gonna say query, space, open curly brackets. This is where the query is going to start. So what is this? This is gonna be desert photos. Cool. Space, or sorry, colon space. And now that I have that set up, the great part about this is I'm gonna head right back to GraphQL and I'm gonna copy all file down to the second to last. Don't forget that the top curly bracket and the bottom ones you're not gonna copy. So now you know this is working successfully, I can bring it in. So I'm gonna copy it, I'm gonna paste it just like that. Magic, it literally works. That's the great part about the system is that I know it's gonna work successfully because GraphQL is working. Now, I could always mess it up above and I've done that before, but in this case, so far, so good. Let me save it and see what happens. Save and cool. No error messages, so far so good. It's always the case, did I do something? Did I, whatever I did, if there's something going on, it'll usually tell me that I didn't query something correctly. So what I then have to do is I have to change the aspect ratio. So if I come over, there we go, to Gatsby image, I'm gonna pull the basic one at Gatsby image sharp fluid. Note the fixed ones are above and the fluid ones are below. So I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna add the famous three dots of Gatsby image. And so what I'm gonna do is in Visual Studio Code, I'm gonna take the aspect ratio, dot, 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 and Gatsby image sharp fluid. Now I don't necessarily need the relative path up here as well. So the relative path I'm gonna take out and the relative directory I'm gonna take out as well. What I need for right now are the ID and the child image sharp and fluid. So we're gonna follow this down and then create a map above to map out all of these photographs to come in with Gatsby image. So let's map these nodes of these pictures above. So if I scroll up to the top, what I wanna do is after const index page, I'm gonna add data. I'm gonna pull data from down below. And what I also need to do is I have to pull in the Gatsby image above to make it work. So I'm gonna say import IMG from Gatsby, not equal sign, did I spell it right? Yep, Gatsby image. Oh, <laughs> obviously front is not gonna work. I'm like, why is it not working? From Gatsby image. Visual Studio Code is so good. If you start to make a mistake, it's almost gonna notify you before you realize it. And I couldn't type in image, so it didn't work. Perfect, so we're gonna use capital IMG for Gatsby image. So we have data and the image. So Mr. Spaceman, you're going away. I'm sorry to tell you that. So in here, what I will do is I'm gonna say the following. Data with curly brackets. So Come on, if I can type it, there we go. Data, and in this case, we're gonna pull the data from the desert photos. So I'll say data dot desert photos. I have a capital P for photos. I'm gonna say edges and create a variable name for this. In this case, I'm mapping images. So I'm gonna say lowercase image. So I'm gonna say parentheses image in here. So notice how the map is 
yellow and image goes back to that light blue. So the image, I'm gonna say equal sign, greater than symbol, and then open this up. And if I hit the return key, what you should eventually have are two closed parentheses and a curly bracket to close as well. And I'll just create one space, not two. There we go. So what I'm gonna map, we're gonna map the Gatsby image. So I'm gonna say less than sign IMG. And then for this is now Gatsby image, I will close it just so I have an open and self-closing image tag. And I'll create some space for the image because I'm gonna probably gonna run out of room on this side right here. I'm gonna say fluid if I can type properly in this case. So the Gatsby image is gonna say fluid and then equals, I'm gonna pick up where I left off. So I'm gonna say image is gonna to relate to image above and then say node dot child image sharp dot fluid. Notice what happened. We went data from the top right here to pull data desert photos, edges, node, child image sharp, and fluid. Or desert photos, edges, node, child image sharp, fluid. We skipped over the ID for a second. We're gonna bring this in in one second though. So what I'm gonna then do is then say alt desert photos. And since this is fluid, we're gonna keep it fluid and we'll just self-close, and if I save, image, oh, that's because something up here was from the component in the image, so we'll just take it out, because that's from the spaceman. Let's save and take a look and see if everything worked or everything didn't work. Check it out. Picture one, picture two, picture three it successfully mapped out the photographs and put them here. So that's good, but I have to do a little touch up here and there. So what I also wanna do is I need to add a key as well. So inside the image, I'm gonna say image key equals, and then pull the ID to match the photograph. Since we already have the image, if we scroll down, I have to go from edges node to ID. So we've already got the edges. I'm gonna say image, node ID. Once again, this just connects the picture with identification or the ID of the node. So it's not gonna do much, you won't see anything different. It's just to help it be semantic in the design. Now here's the thing. The alt information is there, but it's not there. That's because all three photographs have alt. Remember when I went back to my original file names and I said capital Mojave, capital desert, capital Sahara, capital desert, South Sudan desert. We can turn the alt information into, in, we can turn the file names into alt information. Let me say that one more time a little better. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna change the alt not to all three be the same, but to all three be different. So when I'm pulling new information, it's back to GraphQL I go. I'm gonna head over to Safari, and what I'm looking for inside of GraphQL is a base. And if we click on base, I hope this is the right one, yeah, base down below, and we can, for right now, I'm gonna not show the child image sharp because it's gonna show all the information again. So notice now that the base pulls the file name of the file. So Mojave Desert, Sahara Desert, and South Sudan Desert. Cool. Now we can pull the base information for the alt information of each photograph. So we're gonna take base and head over to my Visual Studio Code, and I'm gonna add base right here because it's inside of the node just on my graphical version, it was down below. And in this version, I'm putting it right after the ID. So the base is gonna be the information I'm gonna pull from. So I'm gonna then go up to the top and change the alt not from desert photos, but I'm gonna say image.node.base. Now if I save it, maybe success will surely happen. Perfect, looking good. Now what I should see is all the pictures all over again, 
But if I go into my inspect, what I'm looking for is that the alt is present, but it's not perfectly present. It's kind of present. An alt for a screen reader would say sahara-desert.jpg. I want this to just say Sahara Desert and not JPG. The good thing is we can use all of our code to pull information and pull out the dashes and take out the extension with the base. So let's go into our code and change the base structure. So in the alt information, it's pulling image.node.base. The base is the containment of the file name. So here's some magic that we can accomplish. What I'm gonna say is, I'm gonna say dot split. Split this apart basically, and split it based upon the dashes. So I'm gonna say split, parentheses, and dash. From there I'm gonna do is I'm gonna join it with empty spaces. So first split with the dash, and then join, if I do parentheses, and then add a single quote, and space, so I'm then taking out the dashes and joining with empty spaces. And then what I'm gonna do is, if I can type properly, I'm then gonna say basically split again and say split one more time, this is a lot of splitting, but then split based upon the period, and then after that, take out the extension by saying solid brackets, and saying zero. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna split it apart, then split it one more time based upon the period, only show the first part. So what if I say save? And I did something wrong. What did I do? Oh, I know what I did. That's what's going on. The dash doesn't have the quotes around it, so it's not gonna work. So I have to put the quotes or the single quotes around the dash and I did something else is wrong. Oh, again, I did it at the same time as well. This one works, and that one now works, but this one didn't. What I love about also, I'm stopping for a quick second, notice how it told me what's going on. So it's like, hey, you got an issue with this one right here, and then you have an issue with this period right here. So I have to then go back into here, add the single quotes and save, and now we get success. To me, this terminal is just fantastic. So once again, split, parentheses, single quote, dash, period, join, parentheses, single quote, space, empty, period, split, parentheses, single quote, period, and then add the zero. Let me save it and see what happens. Now if I refresh the page to make sure it's gonna work, I will pull the alt, let me just do this. And now what we should see is alt is Mojave Desert. Rad! We pulled the alt information from the base of the file name. Well, we've got the pictures and we have the alt information. Now the next part is, is to link up the carousel into this project. All right, so now we've got the Gatsby image working. Big thumbs up, pat on the back, awesome. So what we have to do next is we have to bring in the carousel from React Bootstrap. I'm gonna come to the top of the page and I'm gonna say import. And in this case, I'm gonna bring in two things. I'm gonna bring in the container and the carousel, which is C-A-R-O-U-S-E-L and this is gonna be from React Bootstrap. So, perfect, we got this piece linked up and what's gonna happen is, it's gonna say, hey, nothing's working, which is fine. All I wanna do is I wanna put this carousel inside the container just to make sure it's fluidly working. So I'm gonna say container and just write the word test to make sure it works okay. I always like doing small things first to make sure it works and there's the word test, and it's spaced appropriately. Awesome. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna copy this information and bring it into test. And we might need to do some tabbing. Perfect, so it's nested inside a container. And now when I save, 
perfect. We have our three photographs. So I'm gonna change this into the carousel now. So what I have to do is inside the container, I'm gonna create some space because I'm gonna do some copying and pasting. This takes a little bit of work, but the great part is we know this is working. So let's implement the carousel and bring it into the project. So I'm gonna say carousel, open, and of course close as well. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the carousel and bring the carousel items into it. So I'm gonna cut, I created one space too many. There we go. And of course it didn't perfectly nest. So if I tab in, now the carousel is where it is nested from container. Let me do some little light housekeeping. There we go. I am a big proponent of making sure I don't lose track of the indentation because when I'm moving a lot of data back and forth, it's really easy to lose track. And so if I indent and then go back out or I nest things properly, I know where things are and I can read them in case problems ensue. The good thing is so far when I save this, I keep getting success messages. Keep in mind that if you hit those red areas where if you type in carousel but forget to close it, it's gonna throw a big error message. So if you're doing this along with me, make sure you do read your terminal just because it's easy to make mistakes in this case. In fact, I have my notes in front of me just so I'm making sure not to make mistakes. And as you saw from the previous point, I still did make the mistakes. All right, so I have carousel. So what I wanna do is with this image, inside of here, I'm gonna add something brand new inside of the second open parentheses. I'm going to say carousel dot item and whoop, inter <laughs> interim, that's a good one. How about item? That looks a little better. And I'm going to move the key up to the parent. So I'm going to say key now goes into the carousel item key ID. And what I also like about the newest version of VS Code is these red kind of error messages show that this carousel is not closed properly. That's pretty cool, I like that. Perfect, so now we have carousel item. So the carousel item is gonna contain the image. So if we move this up, now I'm gonna take the image and I'm gonna cut, and then in here, I'm gonna paste. So now what I've done, if it's perfect, yep, it's indented, I'm just double checking, making sure it's all good, is that I have container, carousel, and then the data mapping in for the carousel, and then it's gonna map out not just the image, but the carousel item as well, and I moved the key above. I'm gonna keep the alt where it is. Let's save this, and let's see if it works, or the error messages. Oh, check it out. We have our carousel. And if I click, carousel, carousel, carousel. Cool. But let's, we need to add some captions down below. Well, the great part about this is that the captions are just like the alt information. So I can replicate this as well with carousel captions in this carousel. I think I said carousel three or four times in one sentence. Yep, I'm pretty sure I did. So after the carousel item, I'm gonna hide this just because it is gonna be a carousel so it doesn't bug us in the background. So after carousel item, oops, I'm sorry. Let me put that, make that back again. Inside the carousel item, because it's gonna be all part of one item, I wanna say carousel caption. So I'm gonna say carousel dot caption and this will put the information in the right place for the caption and what I can do is I can simply use this same piece of information copy it make a p tag and paste it in and now what this does is this allows me to say well the alt is going to be the same as the caption and check it out now we have Sahara Desert South Sudan Desert, Mojave Desert, and so forth and so forth in our design. That's pretty rad. I wanna show you one more thing though, because this is really important, especially if you don't have perfectly sized images. Since we're putting our images through Gatsby image, 
Gatsby image can do one more powerful tool to make things look flawless. And that's it can do is it can crop your photos for you. So if your photographs are not perfectly sized, let me show you an example of these files right here. I'm gonna take the Sahara Desert and I'm gonna make one more project, but I'm gonna first stop this because it's gonna create a problem. So I'm gonna call this one Sahara, Sahara Desert not same size. Make sure I make the dots, there we go, or the dashes. I'm gonna go into Photoshop and I'm gonna crop this so it's more of a square. And I wanna show you why this is actually very important. So if I bring Photoshop over here, there's Photoshop and there is my Sahara Desert, not same size. I'm just gonna do a simple little square crop in the middle and we'll just crop that. Actually, no, let's actually make it not perfectly square. But we'll make it rectangular, but in this case, I'm just gonna make it right about there. Now it's a little more squarish. I think the square might be a little too extreme, but I'm thinking if I had rectangular photographs and not everything was perfectly sized. So if I save this project and JPEG, yep, we're good. So now if I restart Gatsby to make sure it does pull that extra picture in, What's gonna happen is if the pictures aren't the same size, then the carousel will do a little wonkiness going on here. And what I mean by wonky is if I refresh the page, we should have four pictures. Whoop, notice that? It's pretty tall. That's because the ratio is not the same size and now that gets a little smaller. So notice this again. So the power of Gatsby image is it can auto crop my pictures for me. So let's head over to GraphQL and do that. So if we head back and we can come down here, I'm just gonna write it manually for this case in this instance. What I can do is in this fluid, it can do a couple different things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add parentheses into fluid and I'm gonna say max width. And we are using camel case with the max width, so lowercase m, capital width. I'm gonna say colon, and then I'm gonna say, in this case, I will say 1200 for 1200 pixels. Now here's the thing. I think about the ratio of the picture, two by three, four by six, all of that. So I'm gonna say max width 1200, and then the height for the max height is going to be 800. Now, that's great, max width, max height, but I want them to all fit the same way. So I'm gonna say fit and then cover, uppercase cover in here. And where is it gonna crop this fit to? It's gonna crop focus in the middle. So I'm gonna say crop focus, not foxes, focus, and then all caps center. Let's save and see if this works or if I type something in the wrong way. Oh, what did I do? Let me see what's happening. Max width, oh, I said max height. I went into the CSS mode. See, it, it never fails. I'm gonna mess something up. So max height should be here and it's not gonna be lowercase or the dash, it's capital H for height. Now it re-ran my queries, regenerated the thumbnails, and now when I come back to my project, if I refresh the design, notice now how they're all perfectly sized. This allows you to have a seamless integration from going from side to side. And I made a note that this Sahara Desert is not the same size, but it really is. And that's the power of GraphQL inside of your design to create a carousel that's seamlessly perfect using GraphQL in your design. If you want more videos helping you design more and troubleshoot less, check out the videos I have here and don't forget to subscribe. As always, I'm Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes. Thanks so much for watching and have a fantastic day.